Okay. It gives a lot of uh, false information, right? That is the problem with the panoramic image given by the CDC. Either it will look you know, like a very normal place or it will look like a all good bone place. So this looks like you know all good bone everywhere. But this is not like that. When you see the cross section, there is real pneumatization on both sides. So never believe the panoramic image, you know, all this. So we have to see the cross section to believe, believe it. Okay. So we couldn't able to find out the sinus outline. Maybe this side here, maybe this side here. Okay. So further we have to see the actual CD file, CBCT file. Now, if you see here, we can see the uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, something like that. So around 60 to 70 is in the midline, 50 and 80 are in the nasomaxillary buttress area, and 120 and 10, 20 are the terrier area. We will see the right side first. So how much sinus pneumatization has happened anteriorly downward if we couldn't be able to see from the panoramic image. There is a main drawback of this report generated by the CBCT centers. Okay. So this is 10, around 10 to 28. So this is almost the terrier area. Okay. This is almost the pterygoids. This is in front of the pterygoid. So this is in front of the pterygoid. It looks like the pterygoid is good from the previous slide. This is in front of pterygoid. The measurement here given is the height is around uh, 5 the width is around 7, okay. You can place it definitely a 8 mm implant compressive. It's a good diameter, 4.2 into 8 we can place. So one pterygoid and in front of the pterygoid also you can place a short compressive, okay. This is for the right side plan. So when we So if you see here, this is almost in the premolar area, it looks like, okay, this is in the premolar area, maybe this is second premolar, maybe this is first premolar, this is the molar area where we don't have enough room. This is close to the nasomaxillary buttress area. So if you see here, can you see here, there is only nasal floor, there is, the sinus is very far away, this is the nasomaxillary buttress area. Okay, so the nasomaxillary buttress area is almost in the canine and first premolar area. So actually maybe in the second premolar area you may have got good bone here. Okay. So the ridge is very thin, but the bone quality is good. What you can do is, you can do a palatal approach technique. So instead of going through the apex like this, you can start the drilling palately. Start the drilling palately and do the Okay, even a compressive implant you can place 3.75, not wider diameter, 3.75 you can place. The length should be selected by the, where you feel the drop. Here some of the rough threads may be exposed palatally, but that is okay, because palatally there is a soft tissue there. So for, after that you can
to it. So this is a classic Nesum Excel buttress. We are also the same plan. Instead of placing the implant like this, you can place implant like this. Okay. Your abutment also will come in a favorable position. If you place through the crest, you may have to bend. So pterygoid one implant in front of the pterygoid one short implant under the first and second premolar or in the canine region, two implants you can place. So how to catch this nasomaxillary buttress area? There is a trick to exactly find out the nasomaxillary buttress area is. So the nasomaxillary buttress area is here. Right? This is the area. Okay. So you have to open the flap till here, expose the nasal floor and find just later to the nasal floor, this is that spot. Okay, find this find this spot later to the nasal wall, little nasal wall. So draw a line here and start drilling from here. Okay. Draw the drilling yeah. and you can place one implant here and one tail guide, one short implant. So placing a short implant reduces this inter implant mm -hmm. distance. Since the sinus is somewhat like this, we can place a short implant. Okay. So exactly the same plan on the left side we can replicate. This is my X-ray buttress one implant. Just to it one short implant and one pterygoid and one short implant. We will see it. So this is the left side pterygoid, right? This is the left pterygoid. In front of the pterygoid, you are getting some bone is there. Place here, short implant. The diameter, the width also is less. Right side is around 5, but here it is around 4. You can place a short implant there. So left side also you can place a pterygoid and uh, short implant. But if you see in the molar area, left side, it is very much poor. There is absolutely no bone and also the sinus is filled. So the doctor has to inform the patient about the sinus uh, chronic inflammation. Okay, there is. So we will come to the nasomaxillary buttress area. So here what is the nasomaxillary buttress area? Which one? 92. Hmm? Ah, this one. 90. This is 70, this is 80. Okay. The 90 goes beyond it. So around this, this, this area. This is the nasomaxillary buttress area. So how to find out? Open the flap. Lateral to the lateral nasal wall. So instead of if you go like this, you will get only less bone and the abutment also coming out. But if you go like this, you can get more bone, good bone and abutment also will come at the position. So nasomaxillary buttress, behind the nasomaxillary buttress, so this is behind, right? The nasomaxillary buttress may be in the canine and first premolar. This may be the second one. You can place a same palatal approach. Okay. Instead of going like this, you can approach like this. Okay. So this is almost to the anterior. So we have planned both pterygoid and the short implant in front of the pterygoid. The nasomaxillary buttress 1 and distal to nasomaxillary buttress 1. Now we are going for the midline implants. Next to? No. Nasomaxillary. Nasomaxillary implant. Okay. Nasopalatine canal. So anteriorly, the nasopalatine canal they exist. In the premolar area, the nasomaxillary buttress they exist. 
Mr. Lee, the Terrigari in front of you. Okay. So, Terrigari in front, two in front. This must be the area and behind two in front. Okay. So, four in front and one in the center. This is almost the lateral incisor area. Between lateral incisor and one. So, what is the landmark? Is that? Yes, sir. Okay. Canal. Just in, just lateral to the Nesopalatin canal. You can see here. This is the lateral incisor area. Okay. This is a very thin ridge. But just next to the Nesopalatin canal, you got a somewhat good ridge. Okay. So choose this spot and the same palatal approach. Okay. Do like this. The moment you go to the lateral incisor area, it becomes very thin. You have to place a basal. But here, if you, you can choose a, a compressive small diameter, avoid going into the canal. So, this is the right side. left side next to the canal this is next to the canal as you go next to the canal you are reaching the niso maxillary buttress also so this may be the central this may be the lateral lateral kind of thing. there is some good bone is there 9 mm only is there but you can pass a 10 mm plant short on that so final plan is 10 mm plants okay if you plan for a similar thing processes and basal implant the plan is 10 plants. Okay. So, very good. One shot. This is very one. Crystal one. And early one. And early one. This is very one. Here one. Here one. Okay. Our aim is to keep this inter intercanal distance as much as possible. If this distance is very less, the welding will work. If this distance is more, for example, if you cannot place here this implant, or if you cannot place this implant, this interdental interimplant distance becomes more, then welding will become a failure. Okay. So that is why we are trying to place here one implant and here one implant. So, if you can place standard implant and if you do welding, and if most of the implants are compressive, welding will work fine. But if you place majority of basal implant, then welding may not work. You have to go for a symmetry tangy metal acrylic uh, process. So, what is the one more option to deal with this situation? Screw. Yeah, screw retained uh, option. So, with the screw retained option, it becomes planning becomes more easier actually. So, one terry guide. One terrigate next to nasopalatine canal one one implant yes, and yes, one nasomaxillary in a tilted way you can place right yes. okay for spreading if you place it straight now again the interimplant distance increases so for that we are placing a tilted implant we are placing a tilted implant here on this six implant is more than enough in the plant for screw retained um, so, if you are planning for basal, sorry, simplant, you can place here definitely a 15 mm compressive implant here, 15 mm, you can place here 10 mm, 10 mm, here maybe 15 mm, here 15 mm, KOS multi-unit you can place. Okay, even with violence multi-unit single piece, you can do this situation. So, better to open the flap, whatever you do, better to open the flap. So, advantage of opening the flap is you can see the mesomax ready buttons clearly, and you can you can do the palatal approach technique. So, the main thing with this approach is 
the this patient is one is palatal approach because of skin bridge palatal approach or alveolar bypass and the second is we are using the naso maxillary uh buttress area naso maxillary buttress area okay and pterygoid and shorter pterygoid and shorter 